Good evening everybody. Welcome to St Mag's Church for Evening Prayers. You're very welcome. Oh, just heard my lights not on. How are you? We're going to pray. Might do something a little bit different this evening. Welcome if you're watching this later on on uh, or at Facebook. Hey Magdalena, good to see you. Just going to wait for a little bit whilst people come on stream. Welcome. Hey Judith and Richard. Hey, good evening, Ray. Lovely to see you. Do if you, if you want to say um, say hi so that we know who's watching. Although I don't see everybody, so don't feel missed out if I don't say your name. Hi, Virginia and Wendy. I'm just looking something up. Hi, Anthony and Virginia. I've got a really, really cheesy song in my head. I'm not going to sing it, but you know when you get like a really cheesy song in your head and it won't go away? One of those. I need something else to sing. Hey, Anne and Jackie. Jackie and Jeff. Say hi to Jeff for me, Jackie. Looking forward to seeing you all guys. Hi Adrian. So first of all, apologies this morning if you were tuning in and uh, I wasn't there. It's because I wasn't there. I completely forgot until I got a message at 18 minutes past and <clears throat> literally just, I was, I was doing other things. I was doing maths with the kids at the time. And uh, so we did it late. And it's on there if you want. Actually, the reading was really good from this morning, really inspiring. I loved it. Um, so uh, go back and have a have a look. So, but apologies if you were looking and you were nowhere to be found. Good evening, Jill. Just wait a moment or two longer. How's your day been? What have you been up to? Uh, are there things that we can be praying for as community this evening? I would love to know. Let's wait a minute or two longer. Whoops. Now, if you've got a drink of something, uh, we have a simultaneous sip of an evening and uh, in the day. So God bless you, my friends. Uh, uh, looking forward to seeing you soon. Good evening, Emma. Nice to see you. Well, whilst people continue to come on, why don't we begin by praying together? <clears throat> Father, I thank you that you call us to pray as community. Thank you that yeah we're doing it individually but we're also doing it as part of uh, something that's bigger as part of your body here in uh, the bay in st mags and further afield and holy spirit i ask that you come and you lead our prayers this evening just take a moment to be still simply to be still to breathe slowly and to ask God to meet with you. I'd encourage you to bring the day that you've had to God, the, the good things and not so good things, and just talk to him. Talk to him about how it's been and think about where has God been in, in the midst of that? 
I mean, yes, we believe that he's with us, but has he been at the forefront of our minds, at the back of our minds? Have we booted him out? Uh, or has he, um, have we seen him at work in us uh, and through us? Spend a bit of time just thinking and asking God to show you where he's been with you through the day. Now we're going to pray for uh, for individual things in just a moment, but let me read you. Yeah, I think this. I was. Yeah, I was debating what to do, but I think I'm going to read this. God is not interested in using the mighty, but the willing. He's not into using amazing people, just the ones who are prepared to lay their lives down before him. God is not looking for extraordinary, exceptionally gifted people. Just lay down people who love Jesus, who will carry his glory with transparency and not take it for themselves. Not taking God's glory for ourselves, not drawing attention to ourselves, but drawing attention to God. In Luke chapter 10, verse 25, we read about a wise man, <clears throat> excuse me, a well-educated expert in the law who stood up and challenged Jesus. He wants to test Jesus, so he asked him, excuse me, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The question in and of itself was a good question. But Jesus, being predisposed, in other words, quite often answered a question with another question, shot straight back in with this, what is written in the law? How do you read it? The law expert already knew the answer. He replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. This man knew how to answer Jesus's question, but he didn't know what to, he ought to do about it. He was unable to comprehend what it meant in practical terms. Sometimes we have that struggle, don't we? We know what we ought to believe, what we ought to say, um, or we, we, we sense that yeah, this is the right thing to do. And yet we sometimes wrestle with how to put that into practice. That's discipleship. That's the, the lifelong journey of discipleship, isn't it? The man who spoke to Jesus didn't get it. He spoke out the words, but he missed the point. Jesus responded to him saying, Yes, you've answered correctly, but then he added with one little more statement, one more little statement, do this and you will live. This is what the expert really needed to understand. And, if, and, if, and this is the part we need if we want to see revival. If we love God with all our beings, with devotion, we will live. If we do this, we will see revival. If we do this, the gospel will go forth. This is the simplicity of Jesus' message. And what it makes me think is that, you know, Roland and Heidi, they don't, they don't compartmentalise their relationship with God. They don't say, well, this is my spiritual life and this is my family life and this is my work life and this is my social life. Like God is some commodity or... Uh, a, um, a lifestyle choice you know we go to the gym and we believe in God that's not how it's how it's supposed to be Jesus isn't um, a life enhancer he's either Lord or not and yeah there's a process of that of us of me making that um 
applying it in my own life. You know, we believe it, we believe he's worthy of it, and then it's about, so what does that look like day in, day out? Being loved by him, allowing him to love us so that, so that we have love to give, allowing, being filled with his mercy so that we have mercy to give, being filled with his grace, being filled with his healing, being filled with his hope, with his peace, with his comfort, sometimes with his challenge, so that we have challenge to give. We give and receive. We love God and we love others. And we make it so complicated sometimes. Lord, will you help us to, to have a childlike faith. We may have lots of knowledge that we've built up over the years, but ultimately help us to simply believe, uh, to be filled with your love and to lay down our lives and see life coming in us and through us because of that. Just almost as a bit of a, almost as a bit of an aside, but I just wanted to ask you, uh, and I'm, so I'm going to ask for you to, to input some ideas and um, say what you think. But I mean, on Sunday, I'm, I'm speaking about God's, uh, I'm speaking about one of the values of mags and that being the theme of justice and the theme of um, God's kingdom being a place where uh, people that are treated right and where we stand with the weak or the marginalized and the oppressed um, and um, and raise people up and give help those who find themselves without a voice to have a voice and uh, to uh, challenge the cause of the underdog so that's what i'm going to be talking about and and i personally i see that very much as part of the gospel you know we can't just speak about um, good news and yet expect people to be okay with circumstances that aren't right you know it's we both love and get our hands dirty and roll up our sleeves and get involved in in people's stuff and we speak about the hope we have in Jesus and one without the other um, just speaking about the hope we have without addressing practical needs and concerns and th issues of justice that doesn't seem scriptural and just addressing people's um, practical needs without talking about the very real hope that and the life that Jesus gives that doesn't seem biblical both are needed here ends the sermon but just I'd love to know and I might screenshot it or I've, I've even got my notepad when when you hear the word um, justice or when when you hear me say that little thing that I just went off and said What's your reactions? What's, what's your thoughts? What, are there any scriptures that spring to mind? You might find yourself being quoted on Sunday. Um, have a bit of a think. When you think about justice in the kingdom of heaven, justice in the kingdom of God, justice as part of what we're called to, to do and to be, let me know what you think. And you can be writing this down for the rest of the the session it's fine and, and post it after if you want to write something longer I would I want to know what you think and um, maybe how God's spoken to you about that in the past so I'll, I'll leave that there I might come back to it in a minute um, but in the meantime I just want to see any prayer requests and we're going to pray so keep on writing that stuff and putting in some comments Steph, I'm afraid it's a bit too late for, to pray for your burnt pizza. I do believe in resurrection, but... Um, and we're praying for you as you meet with your brother. Uh, 
Um, hey James, hey Anne, Martin, good to see you all. Well, let's pray. Father, you know our needs. You know the needs of people who are watching this evening. Lord, I pray that you will bless uh, Steph's meeting with, uh, with her brother tomorrow. Pray you give her real wisdom and discernment and grace, all that she needs for that meeting tomorrow. Father, we, we lift you the night that lies ahead and we place it into your hands. All our loved ones at church, whether you're part of Mags or, or further afield, Lord, we lift to you those who are in need of your presence, in need of your healing, in need of your peace. We ask for your intervention. We ask for you to draw close to them. And if you want us to be a part of that and to reach out and minister and pray with and bless, show us how we can do that. Give us creativity, we pray. And tomorrow, Father, all the challenges, all the opportunities that we have tomorrow, we place them in your hands. And we ask that we'll do tomorrow with you, in your power, with your wisdom. And let's bring our prayers to a close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Just as we were praying, the that, that line, uh, forgive us our sins as we forgive others, just kind of pinged in my head. Uh, and I just want to encourage you, if, if you're struggling to forgive someone tonight, ask grace. It's not just a human thing that we do. We, we exercise our will by choosing to forgive someone. Um, we don't, it's not saying that what that person did was right or excusable or that we should put up with it in the future necessarily. It's none of those things. But I just had a sense that there might be one or two people watching either now or later for whom you just know that God's calling you to forgive someone. And you know that you'll be um, ensnared in unforgiveness and bitterness until you do that. And I just want to encourage you, ask for God's help. It's, of course it's not easy, um, but it does lead to freedom and it does lead to life to choose to forgive and say, God, by your grace, just come in and begin to unlock the, um, the rusty hinges of hate or the, you know, the, that, that impasse that you can't get past. Uh, you you want to be able to, but you don't want to be able to. Do you know what I mean? That, that place where there's um, a lock uh, and ask God to help with that. It may take a time, maybe a process, but I just want to encourage you that that is that's part of the, the kingdom message, part of the gospel message, is that God brings freedom and he brings forgiveness and both to you and to the person who's grieved you. I hope that makes sense. It might be off, but just it, there might be one person for whom that's what you needed to hear this evening. Um, yeah, so I'm just looking at, some of your comments, thank you. Um, Ray, I find it a bit confusing, forgiveness, but justice. Um, so justice, there's there's kind of two kinds of justice in in scripture, I guess. There's there's the justice that that God is a God of justice, and in Jesus we have um, in the cross of Christ, God both uh, revealed His justice. In, in that um, the fallenness of mankind, the sin of mankind was dealt with and was paid for. 
and um, the different kind of metaphors, analogies that scripture uses to describe the, the effect of Jesus' death. So there's both justice and love revealed in the cross towards us. But there's also all the way through scripture, right from Old Testament, the prophets, you know, Psalms, Jesus and the Gospels, um, the Acts of the Apostles, the letters, you know, the theme of justice and caring for the least and the widow and the orphan and the oppressed and the foreigner is there. It's all there. It's much more obvious than some of the other stuff that we get wound up about. And it's, it's so obvious and so plain and so challenging that in many cases I think we choose to ignore it because it's easier to do so and it's quite costly to think about, so what does it actually mean? It's so there in your face in Scripture um, throughout Old and New Testament that it matters to God how we treat uh, people and how we stand with people. Um, yeah, it's almost like, wow, talk to, me about, talk to me about my relationship with Jesus. I'm happy with that. But we struggle when it comes to actually thinking he's, he's calling us to something more than that. So yeah, it's a really good question. It is a bit confusing. Virginia, you say, when I, when I think of justice, I always think of Jesus. He sees everything. Nothing is hidden. He's my advocate. Isn't it wonderful? Jesus is both the, the, the advocate who stands alongside us, and he's um, the, the, the one who was um, punished uh, in our place. Uh, it's astonishing, really, isn't it? He, he's the judge who steps down from the dock having passed the sentence and then pays the, the, um, the fine for us, writes a check for us. It's a clumsy analogy, but you, you get my meaning. Um, he brings justice, but in his timing. Um, Richard James, I think it's down to the mission you have in life, how you help people. Mine was to help people on a practical basis. Yeah, completely, um, Richard, you know, we, we all have different uh, different ministries, different emphases, different gifts. Yeah, amen to that. Um, but there is, uh, I think there's always supposed to be a practical outworking to our faith. It's not just in our heads, cerebral. It's not just spiritual. All It all comes together. We are, we're, we're good at separating stuff out. Jesus is into the into the whole of life, what we what we think, how we live. Um, Judith, if we don't love our neighbour, we won't meet with God. This worries me a lot. I guess, Judith, you're picking up on some of the passages um, where, and there are some really really challenging passages particularly from the lips of Jesus when he says things like you know unless you did it um, for the least of these you didn't do it for me or you know or the parable of the the, the sheep and the goats and all the wheat and the tares and um, we mustn't dodge the challenge of Jesus words where he says actually if you this is really important um, if you don't love then you've obviously not um, love God because if you if you love God you will love others so we mustn't dodge the challenge of that but there's still grace and mercy and I think Judith he knows your heart and your heart is concerned with loving others and you want to love people better and you want to show that practically and the times when you when you and I struggle to do that he forgives uh, and there is grace we fundamentally we believe that God is gracious um, yeah, it's both. He, there is an expectation that our faith leads to living a certain way, but, but our faith isn't based on how we live, it's based on his grace. I, I don't know. Um, Lionel, um, quoting from Hebrews 10 verse 30, for we know who said, it is mine to avenge, I will repay. <coughs> Just, ultimately, justice is with God. Um, you're right, Lionel. Um, and uh, we will give account. We will. 
but again, similarly to Judith, um, first and foremost, I think he'll be looking at, um, did you trust in my son? Did you look to him for, for, um, for my mercy? Did you understand from him my character, what I'm like, that I'm a God of justice and of love? Um, and did you reflect that justice and did you reflect that love uh, in your life? Um, uh, good. It's really good, really interesting. Thank you, folks, because it's just looking ahead of Sunday um, and thinking through some of the questions. If you're watching this later and you want to comment, I'll, I'll have a look back. And um, yeah, it's been a bit rambly, a bit all over the place, but that's okay. Um, should we pray? Father, I thank you so much that we get to, I know it's not in person, but I thank you that we get to just meet online, to talk, to pray, to think about issues, um, to meet with you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will bless each person who's watching now. Those who are watching later, walk with us into the rest of our night, give us peaceful sleep, and wake us refreshed tomorrow to follow you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm just going to end with... Yeah. I'm going to end with a really ancient prayer. This is from the Book of Common Prayer, 5th century, okay? So, but it's, it's lush. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. And by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy Son, Jesus, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Great. Um, I'm just scrolling down. Oh, Samantha. All my life I've sensed or dreamt about something even very small than it actually happens. Um, I don't think... I'm going to try and press this. I might stop the connection at this point, but I can't see the rest of your message yet. Um, but Samantha, so that'd be a really interesting conversation to have. You know, I, I do believe that God speaks to us in, in dreams. Um, I think <clears throat> without being able to see the rest of your message, my, my response would be um, if something is helpful, encouraging and in line with scripture, uh, uh, then it may well be that, that God speaks to us in all sorts of different ways. He's incredibly creative and dreams is one of the ways that he speaks to us. Um, uh, yeah, that's, I'm sorry I can't see the rest of your message. Be a really interesting conversation. Um, James, forgiveness is like a muscle. Sometimes I have to forgive someone uh, else for something smaller. Yeah, and again, I can't see the rest of your message, but you know, we practice forgiveness, don't we? Um, you meet some people who are so kind of encased in, uh, in, in unforgiveness and bitterness. You know, it's hard to, hard to believe that they can break free. They can, but it's a process of... The image that comes to... You know, um, Pirates of the Caribbean, when they have like a, a chest that's been underwater and it's all barnacled up with bits and pieces on it and rust you know kind of opening up i met people like that you've probably met people like that actually practicing forgiveness and just forgiving for all that for the small stuff not letting it kind of stick is so important to live a life that's free you know to not mither about the person that cut you up in traffic or who beeped you or whatever just to let it go forgive it's the way to go, man. It's forgiveness, um, and um, and by practicing that, it it, um, it helps when it comes to some of the bigger stuff. Um, and thank you, God's riches at Christ's expense. Um, yes, yeah, Steph, as as you as I said, um, testing those things um, by God's spirit. Anyway. I reckon we'll finish there. Thanks ever so much, folks. I've got to go. I'm going to go and stick kettle on. And um, I, think, I think I've think i swapped with Joe. So I'll see you in the morning and 
Joe's in the evening tomorrow. And um, pray for my, my voice. I, I think I uh, strained it about a week ago and it's still gravelly. So I'd, I'd really appreciate you praying uh, that I have uh, healing in case I've done something to my vocal cords. I don't think I have, but it's still a bit gravelly. So just pray. Uh, God bless. See you soon.